Well, for more on this, I'm joined by American businesswoman and managing director of Recastled, Kosha Garda. Kosha, thank you for joining me tonight. Ten Republicans broke ranks and voted to impeach Donald Trump over the Capitol riots. Did this surprise you? Do you think there was there were going to be more or less? Because the Republican Party is divided over Donald Trump's future. Hi, Corey. Good, good to be with you. Thanks for having me again. So I would say it's it's not surprising. I mean, it's hard to know the exact number of how this would go and, um, you know, even in the, in the future if the Senate decides to bring it. But we've been talking about this fracture in the Republican Party that's been building for a long time and really just got amplified and accelerated under President Trump. And in this moment, especially after the very atrocious events of last week, it's really provided cover for people in the Republican Party to pick a side because the, the fracture is only widening. And I think those 10 uh, establishment Republicans who did that are very clearly picking their side. And, uh, you know, that's basically what it's about. It's a political calculation rather than a legal standard, because the, the standard for incitement is at a very high bar. This is strictly old fashioned brass knuckle politics. And I think that's kind of what went into their calculus. Yeah, I think you're right there. It is old fashioned brass knuckle politics, but it's going to go to the Senate now. And my understanding is that there can't be a resolution really in the Senate, given the timetable, uh, which needs a two thirds majority until after Trump is no longer president. Does that mean you can impeach a private citizen? Because that's effectively what it would be. The, the, the verdict would be delivered on someone that is uh, no longer president of the United States. Right. They don't come back into session until the 19th. And as Annalise reported, uh, Mitch McConnell has said he is not bringing them back before then for a special session. So I'm not a lawyer, a constitutional lawyer. There's been some debate, though, about this um, in legal circles. And the consensus seems to be from constitutional lawyers that the constitutional mechanism of impeachment does not and cannot apply to a private citizen, which is what Trump is going to be in seven days. So um, I, it looks like that's not something that's going to be viable constitutionally. And then also politically, this is not a popular thing among the base, even though those 10 uh, Congress people made this choice to, to sit on that side of the divide. And I think once he's out of office and is a private citizen, it's going to be even more toxic within the base and they're going to make those calculations. And I would be very surprised if they decided to waste time and taxpayer money pursuing that once he's out of office in seven days. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are now talking this is a political stitch up and the agenda really is to hound Trump from office first. But secondly, to ensure that he's prevented from running for the presidency again or or members of his family should be too embarrassed to run for public office. Is there still a potential, do you think, for a Trump 2024 ticket or will the country have moved on, do you think, by then? Yeah, I think that's a question on everybody's mind. And, and knowing Trump, he's probably going to keep that guessing game going and sort of leave a little bit of that possibility open, um, you know, regardless of whether or not he, he wants to do it. I don't know. It's, it's really just hard to say and impossible to predict. I think the, the Trump agenda, the policy platform of America first and all, what all that means for immigration and trade and spending and deregulation and all of that, is alive and well, whether that's him or it's somebody else who can take that mantle um, and take that on remains to be seen. The other thing, too, I think, you know, among Trump's base, which is very large, 75, 80 million people that voted for him, there are those who love him unconditionally. And you can see they're, they're sticking by him, even through all the events of, of the past week. But there's another part of the base that I think doesn't get reported on as much or covered as much that actually don't really like him. And they've never liked his style or his rhetoric or his um, personality. And they essentially kind of hold their noses and voted for him because they like his policy platform and the direction uh, it was taking the country in. And I think those folks, if there's somebody else with a, a little bit more of a different personality or style that resonates with them, but is willing to kind of take the heat when it comes to these positions that are popular with the, the base, but not popular with the establishment and uh, is able to withstand that, could be somebody who sort of takes the baton on on from him. But, you know, it's really anybody's guess. Yeah, I think uh, the media certainly and the left of politics are going to miss Donald Trump as a public figure because he's, you know, provided so much, uh, so much content for them and so much discussion point. But ultimately, we're going to have to start talking about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and their agenda for America. It's radically different, I think, than what Donald Trump has done. Has Biden indicated what he wants to do in his first 100 days in office? 
Uh, so there are a few things, I think, you know, just harnessing the events of the last week, they're talking about really stepping up law enforcement uh, internally on and declaring certain things as domestic terrorism and really ramping that up. I think that's a very hot button issue because people, the, the, the uh, platform of law and order and improving that and supporting cops is a very popular issue around the country, especially in suburbs and things like that. The issue has been that it's deemed as sort of selective outrage or it's being applied selectively to certain types of unrest and not others. So I think that's going to be a hot button issue, but they've signaled that they're, they're looking to go there. Um, I think, you know, the, some of the signature issues of President Trump, such as the wall, uh, a certain, I think, 400 miles of it were built. He did not, and he was not uh, able to successfully complete all 2,000 miles of it. So that's something that is in motion that I think Biden has indicated he'll reverse or at least leave it be and, and not allow that to proceed. Um, I think, you know, the, the standard, stock standard things of health care, taxes, repealing the, the tax cuts that were passed before, resetting some of the deregulation that was unrolled back, kind of putting that back into motion, all those things are things that he's talked about. Yeah, it's going to be a very challenging time, and, and particularly with the economy still recovering from the COVID-19 crisis over there. Joe Biden, I think, has indicated he might have a $2 trillion stimulus plan in the works. That would uh, certainly go a long way if it's targeted in the right area. But he seems to be defining where he wants to target some of it based on, on race or minority groups rather than to all Americans perhaps in need. Yes, I think the, the 2,000 enhanced stimulus checks that got much debate before the Georgia runoffs, uh, it looks like that some version of that will likely pass, ironically, um, you know, with Chuck Schumer now in the uh, Senate majority leader position. But aside from that, which seems to be popular and something people wanted, um, it's, it's not going to come at the expense of other spending. So it's sort of like a plus, and that just increases the debt, debts and deficits. Uh, and then the other thing, I think, around the pandemic, which is another issue front and center, is he is uh, proposing and advocating more of a lockdown centric or sort of that type of approach. We'll see. How, and ultimately, it's up to the governors and the federated system of the U.S. anyway. But that's going to be another difference where I think this is a, a keystone issue that people in general, certainly in the U.S. and probably globally, are increasingly uh, opposed to lockdowns and see it as a very blunt instrument approach to where we are in, with coronavirus. And it is not a popular issue. So that's going to be another one, I think, that will be interesting to see how the chips fall. But for all of these issues, the country is just increasingly, increasingly divided. And I think each side is going to be digging their heels into very different high contrast policy prescriptions.